Just in the last decade, prices of software like 3ds Max, Maya and AutoCAD increased steadily each year. You are probably being swindled, or at least pushed to pay more in a sneaky way. Let me explain. For example, the price of a Max license was in the last 5 years increasing from 1470 bucks in 2018 to $1545 in 2019, $1620 in 2020, $1700 in 2021, $1785 in 2022, and $1875 in 2023, which is the year of making this video. I can't help it but notice this pattern of 5% increase in price that you have to pay for a yearly subscription. As a result, the price of a yearly subscription increased $400 in 5 years, which is interesting. And according to my genius math skills, I predict that the prices of the next 7 years will go as follows. After exhausting my brain, I went to the mage, which is ChatGPT, to do some math for me because I heard it is so impressive. According to the calculations I went through, a 3DS Max or a Maya license will cost around $7,000 in the year 2050 if prices kept increasing like this year after year. If you are an Autodesk client and you have a couple of brain cells, you will notice that this is taking place. Some think it is okay, and others not so much. Now let's see what someone working for an Autodesk partner or a reseller thinks about this. He went on saying, I work for an Autodesk partner. We can't tell you the future, and we can know these things much sooner than you guys do. But I don't think that's the way things are heading. They did a 5% increase earlier this year, and I know the price increase tends to feel anti-consumer, but 5% is fairly normal. Are you afraid they are gonna double their prices overnight? It may feel like Autodesk has the power to do this, but the reality is, it is still a competitive marketplace, especially in 3D. Autodesk has many price-sensitive consumers, and engineering departments around the world would not tolerate a ballooning annual expense like that. So, it is true that Autodesk is not gonna double their prices overnight. Even if you're dumb, I'm sure you can notice that there is a big plan taking place underneath the surface. So far, individual users, studios, and farms are happy to pay, or not so happy depending on how much money they have. But the question is, why Autodesk keeps raising prices, and how do they get away with it, or do they? I think it is not as simple as it seems on the surface. It is true that clients, especially big studios and farms, are still using Autodesk software. Like game development and VFX studios, they use 3D Studio Max and Maya. Architecture firms use AutoCAD, Revit, and so on. While product designers use Fusion 360, in addition to Inventor, and the list goes on. This does not mean that they are very happy with these changes in prices, and that they are not gonna do anything about it. I would argue that companies are taking countermeasures to ensure they protect their margins while Autodesk is trying to increase their profits. At this point, it feels like a tug-of-war game. Switching to alternative software is a strategy that many companies consider when looking to cut costs without compromising functionality and their production pipeline. You know, Autodesk is not the only option out there and other software companies can capitalize on Autodesk Greed. By the way, they are actually doing it already. There are often multiple tools available that serve similar purposes. While a company might initially opt for a well-known premium brand due to its reputation or specific features, there are frequently more affordable or even free alternatives that provide similar functionalities. Some companies find value in lesser-known commercial products that offer competitive features at a fraction of the price. The software can be sometimes more agile, offering frequent updates and a closer relationship with their user base, which can result in a better consumer support and quicker implementation of desired features, which is what a lot of people are suffering from. For example, for AutoCAD only, we have right now great alternatives like ZWCAD, GSTARCAD, and PROCAD, just to name a few. Some of them have features specifically designed to beat AutoCAD. And it is true, 
they intentionally create features to beat AutoCAD as their main competition. One of the most popular types of alternative software is also open source software. These are typically free and maintained by a dedicated community of developers. This is the case with what is going on right now with Autodesk's division of media and entertainment because Max and Maya users are now switching to the free and open source software, which is Blender, at least to a certain extent. This is especially the case with small studios and solo artists. However, in the grand scheme and generally speaking, employees can be resistant to change, especially if they are comfortable with the current software that they have been using for many, many, many years. But if it becomes too much of an expense, they will have to change software, at least partially. To understand the impact these companies are taking when Autodesk raises prices, in addition to the financial burden they are bearing already. Now, you have to look at larger companies with hundreds of employees or even thousands, especially those that have employees through multiple farms nationwide or even internationally. In this case, the numbers start adding up, and they start adding up real quick. Even though it might not seem much at the surface, especially when you first look at it. As one professional working for a big company said, too much forced pricing will result in a market loss, so I don't see them going too crazy. Our power users are all still running Autodesk software, but we shifted nearly 600 casual 2D users around the world over to DraftSite, and they are all working off 30 network licenses, that's just how occasional they are. There are alternatives, I don't care for them, at all. Personally, I think draft site sucks, but we can't be the only company doing this. So the question that is begging to be asked, is Autodesk milking their cash cows too hard? Because from what I can see, some companies and professionals are using lesser known and less competent software to get by and to get the job done. And they prefer this to paying the full price for an Autodesk product or an Autodesk software license. There are many examples out there, because someone else said, we have moved a significant number of our lower frequency users from AutoCAD to DraftSite, which still offers network licensing, saved about a million dollar a year with that move alone. Their account sales teams are highly predatory, and it is gonna cost them in the long run. But the real reason why I think Autodesk is raising prices and they are doing it steadily over the last five years and expectedly in the next year and beyond is because it has to keep growing. As you may or may not know, Autodesk is a publicly traded company with investors, board members, shareholders, and a bunch of other nonsense that you are probably not interested in hearing. Basically guys in suits that understand money and money alone. In addition to how to make more of it, just in case I wasn't clear enough. Since Autodesk is a publicly traded company, it has an obligation to serve the best interest of its shareholders and investors. Let me say that again. It has an obligation to serve the best interest of its shareholders and investors. I mean, those who pour millions of dollars into it each year. This makes Autodesk addicted to growth as much as a drug addict is addicted to the bullshit they inject into their veins. And one of the ways they grow is bingo. They keep increasing their prices. From what I can see, investors are betting hard on Autodesk. Basically, things are only moving forward as more and more people start using Autodesk product and CAD products in general. And as the population grows and new students enter the market, feeding the machine of progress. So more and more licenses are gonna be sold. This is the case because Autodesk covers a wide range of industries like architecture, engineering, construction, manufacturing, media, education, and entertainment. The weird thing is that Autodesk as a public company has not been putting as much effort as it is needed for growing its products or at least not as much as you might expect to make sure that people are gonna be happy and addicted to their software. In fact, I would say the majority of users reported the opposite. Let's take through the Max users in entertainment and Autodesk in architecture and engineering. 
a lot of them would agree that Autodesk was not putting a lot of effort into making the software better with new tools and features. But somehow, people and companies continue to pay. This makes me think that Autodesk is focused more on making investors and shareholders happier in contrast to consumers who actually make this whole thing run in the first place. But to be fair, especially in software like Max and Maya, we're seeing some nice updates that show that Autodesk actually cares at least to a certain extent. And this has been taking place at least for the last couple of years, which is nice. Some users might not agree because they love to hate Autodesk, but I have to say it because it is what it is. So these are some of my thoughts on the subject and why Autodesk keeps raising prices. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below to let me know what you think and like this video and subscribe to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.